Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the next in a series of gaming rules quick and dirty reviews. In this video I am going to be talking about Madeira which was voted on by my Patreon supporters as one of the games that I would review. So a big shout out and thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and if you do enjoy the content that I create and you want to be involved in voting on which games I'm going to review then please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Now first of all a disclaimer. Madeira is published by Watch Your Game. Watch Your Game is now one of my clients and I do commissioned work for them. However, back in 2013 when this game came out, I was not working for Watch Your Game. Um, so uh, this is my personal opinion of the game. It was designed by Paolo Soledad and Nuno Bizarro Santiero, developed by the Watch Your Game team, and as I say, published by them as well. So what do I think about it? Well, Madeira is my favourite game that came out in 2013. And there was nothing that came out in 2014 for me which was a better game than this. And in 2015, I'm still not sure. Basically, Madeira is one of my top five games of all time. If I was to ever actually do a top five games list, then this would very, very likely be in there. This game is absolutely amazing. I love it to bits. And I'm going to try and explain why. This game is a good, heavy, crunchy Euro. If you like that kind of thing, then you're probably going to enjoy this game. It's got a lot going on. A lot of the mechanisms interlock with each other and it just provides for me an, an excellent experience. Now, speaking of the complexity of the game, this game has a 4.27 weight rating on BGG. Whether you ignore those ratings or you find them useful or not, but 4.27 is pretty heavy. And I will be honest with you, this is probably what's your game's heaviest title. And it was a challenge to learn. Now, part of the challenge of learning this game was that I decided to learn it in the middle of a 24 hour gaming event for charity. Two o'clock in the morning, I'd been awake all day. And at two o'clock in the morning, I was really starting to flake. What did we decide to do? We decided to learn how to play Madeira from the rulebook. Three of us tried to learn how to play this game from the rulebook and it is pretty heavy. Um, I'm happy to say we played the game uh, almost correctly. There was only one slight mistake we made, um, which brings me on to the rulebook of the game. So the rulebook of the game is actually very good. Now, this is a heavy complex game and one of the dangers that heavy complex games have is that when people read the rulebook, they go, oh, the rulebook's terrible. And the rulebook for this game, in my opinion, is not terrible. I had nothing to do with this rulebook, so I can say that um, objectively. Is that right? Is that the right word? Yeah, I think it is. Um, it's just it's a heavy game. And there's a couple of parts of the game which are actually um, a little bit complex to learn, like the access to wood rules, and you've got to get your head around it. And there are a few extra little bits in there which are like, oh, yeah, and don't forget at any time you can change these two resources for this one, but only in phases B, C, and D. You can't do it in phase E. You know, once you've played the game once or twice, it all does make sense. But the rule book is pretty good. It's very comprehensive. Everything is in there. You should be able to play the game correctly from the rule book, it's just, as I say, the learning curve of the game is, is quite a lot. I've now played this game, don't know, about 15 times, so I'm very comfortable with the game. I love teaching it to others, uh, and, and I just do enjoy playing it. Now, components-wise, components are all fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with the components, they're all pretty good quality. The card is actually, it's only about one mil, and I know I normally like my cardstock thicker than one mil, but it's good cardstock. You can get different qualities of cardstock, and this, whilst it's only one mil, is actually really, really good cardstock. My only downside on the components, really, is the fact that the three tokens for the resources, so you've got the uh, the grapes, the wheat, the sugar cane, and the bread, and the threes of the resources are the same size token as the ones, which, it, yeah, it's just one of those minor things. Um, but apart from that, as I say, everything else about the components is fine. I like the artwork. I've always liked Mariano's artwork. It's what turned me on to probably the games in the first place when I saw them and looked at them and was like, oh, that looks like a heavy crunchy Euro with nice artwork. So that's what attracted me to, uh, to first Vinyos and then this game initially. Um, so graphic design wise, I think is excellent. I think there's a lot of icons in this game, but they are all very clear and they all make a lot of sense once you've played it. I have one very, very small nitpick, and that is that there should have been a number one on here to say that this refreshes one tile. And you might think, well, there's only one shield on there, which is fine, 
but then there is this tile which also refreshes one tile and that has the number one on it. So I'm here to nitpick and that is my only nitpick with the iconography in the game. Everything else about it is absolutely crystal clear. Um, you just need to play it once before you, and, and then you get used to it. So the core mechanism in the game is dice. Believe it or not, you might actually have dice, but you don't just roll them. Every round, uh, dice are rolled in sets of threes and they're placed on this board here. And then what will happen is in the current turn order, players will choose one of the rows. And what you're doing is you're choosing what your dice are going to be for that round. But you have a way of modifying your dice by spending bread. And this is one of the key parts of the game. You can manipulate your dice by spending bread. So therefore you need to make sure you've got enough bread to manipulate your dice. If you don't have any bread, then you are at the mercy of the dice rolls. If you roll, if the dice that you choose, because you're going last in turn order, are really bad and you've not got any bread, you might think, oh, the game's got a lot of luck in it. Well, first of all, if you're going last in turn order, then that's something that you've got to be, you've got to take into account. And as I say, you've got to save yourself some bread. If you don't save yourself any bread, then you do just have to deal with the dice as they are. However, there is a way in the game where you can move down on this track to get one bread. So the designers and developers of the game have, have kind of thought of everything. They realize that, oh, if you get dice and they're not the dice that you need and you can't do what you want to do and you need bread to manipulate them, well, let's give the, give the players a way of getting bread. Of course, you suffer a penalty for doing so, but at least you can still use the bread to manipulate your dice. Another thing I really like about this game is there's so many different strategies you can do. You can go heavy into the colonies, and I've won a game by going really a lot of people into the colonies, lots of ships, getting lots of points there. There's the place down here with the cities, and I I've absolutely swamped the cities and done that in a massive way, and that's really worked out. You can do shipping to these markets here. There's so many different strategies that you can take in the game. You probably want to be doing a bit of everything, uh, depending on the way that things come out, the actions of the other players, and your King's Favour tiles. I think they're called King's Favour, maybe King's Request, whatever. Anyway, these. These are one of my favourite parts of the game. The way that this works, this is how you're going to score most of your points. And it's just really, really clever. So at the start of the game, you get one of them, right? And this is like an objective for you to achieve, and if you do so, you'll get some points. In, at the start of round one, you will pick up another one. And this is actually picked up from the same board as where you took your dice. So the row that you choose is not only the dice that you take, but it also gives you a choice of which of these tiles you want, which of these scoring tiles you want. And it also determines turn order for the round. So there's a lot in that decision. Anyway, so end of round one, you've got two tiles and one of them you will score. So you're not just stuck with the one that you've got. You've actually now got, oh, I've got a choice of two. Which one have I done the best? Okay, I'm going to score this one. At the start of round two, you will pick up another tile. You don't score any tiles in round two. And then at the start of round three, you'll pick up another tile. And now at the end of round three, you will have to score two of them. So again, you've still got some choice. Then in round four, you'll pick up another one. In round five, you'll pick up another one. And in round, at the end of round five, you will now score all of your remaining three tiles. I just really love how this, uh, this objective system works for these scoring tiles. Very good. If I was to pick one part of the game which is a negative part of the game, it would be the pirate tokens. Now, I'm, I think my love for this game kind of outshines the, the problem with the pirate tokens. And some people don't think there's a problem with the pirate tokens, but I'm saying it here because a number of people who I've played this game with felt it wasn't great. Um, and there's also a number of people online that also don't like the way the pirate tokens work. Basically, you've got these pirate tokens and certain things that you do in the game will get you the pirate tokens. If you can't afford to keep pay the upkeep on your ships, you get pirate tokens. If you can't feed your people, pirate tokens. There's a number of ways in the game that you will get pirate tokens. They have no effect at all for the whole game except at the end. And then you'll get negative points based on how many you've got compared to the other players. So in a four player game, the player who has the most pirate tokens at the end of the game will lose 16 points, which is quite a lot in a game where I think probably around 100, 110 probably wins most of the time. So it's a big thing. You need to try and get rid of your pirate tokens if possible. Uh, then the next player loses eight, the next player loses four. Now, I played a four player game of this once where three players ended the game with no pirate tokens. They all worked hard and got rid of them. And one player was left with one pirate token and they got minus 16 points. And that felt a bit harsh. So as I say, for me, it's part of the game. That's how it works. 
a number of people aren't very keen on that. You can easily fix it with a house rule, um, and they, they may look at changing these rules in the new version. Speaking of the new version, in 2019, Watch Your Game are going to be going to Kickstarter for a new uh, version, a new fancy version of this game. I believe they're uh, going to bling up some of the components, but they are also looking at developing um, a modular set of expansions, which I've been lucky enough to uh, be part of the development and testing of that. So unfortunately, I can't say anything about it because it's all top secret. Um, if you were tuning into this to watch me talk about anything to do with the expansion, then I'm very sorry. Um, I'm just covering the base game. But yes, so sometime in 2019, watch out. They're going to Kickstarter with a new version. Let's try and wrap things up. So Madeira, as I mentioned at the start, one of my top five games of all time. Absolutely love it. Will never say no to playing it. If you do like your heavy, crunchy Euros, then getting it or playing a friend's copy is a no-brainer. Um, the learning curve is quite steep. If you're used to heavy, complex games, you'll be okay. Uh, if you ever get a chance to learn the game from somebody who knows the game in person, then, then always go for that one. Uh, and if you have any rules questions about the game, then please call the Gaming Rules Hotline. It's open 24-7 uh, and, and I will be there to answer your questions. Anyway, let's, let's finish things up. That's about everything I have to say. I've probably forgotten loads of things about it, but yeah, let's, let's finish off the review there. As I mentioned at the start, this video and a lot of my other content has been created thanks to my Patreon supporters. So if you do enjoy the content that I create and you want to help support me and keep the channel going, then please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And that's everything. Take care and thanks for watching. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com